Are plants intelligent? Are they just intuitive? Is intuition even possible without a physical brain? That is the growing debate topping headlines this week. Some scientists say plants are not just reactive to their environment, but actually make decisions and predictions crucial to their survival. By doing things like acting with intention and communicating, for example, plants create chemicals that, when released into the air, can warn other plants about a pending attack. They can defend themselves by creating their own pesticides. Some can lure pollinators, others can lure prey, and possibly, most incredible of all, scientists say plants can store memories, meaning they have at least some sense of agency. But skeptics, however, explain this all away in very simple terms. No brain means no intelligence. Climate journalist Zoe Schlanger spent years learning about plant idiosyncrasies and now has literally written a book that is renewing this debate. I'd like to welcome in Joey Santor, a botanist and host of Kill Your Lawn, to kind of delve into this debate with us. Joey, thank you so much for your time. First of all, I'm just going to start with a simple question. Should plants be considered intelligent? I, it, 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 it all depends on how you define intelligence. We tend to anthropomorphize, and I think that's the problem. I mean, if we can, if us as humans, if we as humans can imagine intelligence, the goal is to not think of it within this narrow frame of reference that we have for our own intelligence. Uh, it's to to zoom out a little bit and get a little bit more perspective, have a broader perspective on what actually constitutes intelligence. When you think about what our feelings are, our thoughts, our feelings, all that is just neurochemistry. I mean, those are just chemicals in our brain, uh, and we often forget that. And it's the result of millions of years of evolutionary selection uh, as primates. And so if we keep that in mind and have that perspective on this, then looking at, I mean, a plant, a plant putting chemicals into the air to communicate with other plants, uh, chemi chemi chemistry is all that our thoughts are. Right. So, it wouldn't surprise me. I think the danger with all this comes from the anthropomorphizing. You know, you get new age charlatans, you, you know, posting this stuff as it's proof of, you know, uh, emotional intelligence or whatever. We can't think of it on those terms. But I think, you know, I think absolutely plants communicate with each other. I mean, it's basically been proven. The whole the whole biosphere communicates amongst itself. Um, the goal is to stop anthropomorphizing and try to think of things as, as humans on another level. Right, exactly. And it's, it's hard for us to, you know, not to think of something that doesn't somehow relate to ourselves, but you make a good point that, you know, they are different. From your perspective, what are maybe some of the best examples kind of illustrating that there is some type of plant intelligence, maybe not like human intelligence, but just, you know, illustrating this plant intelligence? I think, I think that, I think, you know, the, the concept of, of communicating whether it's uh, underground via root systems or communicating individual plants communicating um, just through chemical signaling through what might be analogous to animal pheromones um, you know i think that is that's a good example i mean you know land plants evolved 440 million years ago roughly um, and so they've had a long time uh, to to put this stuff together and to figure to figure it out which again, I'm anthropomorphizing right there. Right. <laughs> um, it's more, more just a, it's more just a figure of speech, though. I mean, you know, the way natural selection works is it's kind of a filter. So you've had 440 million years of the environment selecting for different traits among plants. What, whatever doesn't make it through that filter dies out and goes extinct. Right. Whatever makes it through then thrives. And so, if a trait like communicating that there's an insect eating your leaves. Uh, you know, gets highlighted, if it makes it through that filter, then that starts to thrive. That's an adaptive benefit. Um, those plants are going to do better than plants that can't, uh, right. can't communicate. So I think that's, I think absolutely. I mean, it's, I, I think it's good that this research is happening, that it's not just shut down immediately. I think the skepticism is good, but I also think it's good to have an open mind and also be able to think about things without just using our narrow frame of reference as as humans you know it's right. it's not going to be communication the way that we do it you know but but it's still communication you know thank you for watching go to newsnationnow.com to find newsnation on your television provider and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of newsnation's fact driven unbiased coverage